Hello there everybody, uh, it's Dan Calloway here again and today I want to uh, talk about an application in my favorite distribution of Linux called Arch and that I have set up now um, and it's called SyncThing and I use uh, SyncThing, it's version 1.0.0 .0 .0, uh, downloaded from the web, I'll go to the website here in a moment but um, it's installed in Arch and I'm using it to synchronize files and folders between my Arch Linux uh, distro and my Windows 10 professional platform. Uh, so I've got SyncThing uh, installed on Windows 10 as well, Windows 10 Pro, and it's uh, up and running. It runs 24-7 uh, because um, that's a wired connected uh, platform uh, and I never close it down. And so the synchronization process between my Arch Linux uh, laptop and my Windows 10 Pro desktop is uh, something that is persistent as long as I have my laptop open and sync thing running. And I'll show you how that's set up. Now I'm in my favorite distro of Linux, which is Arch, and I install this uh, distro in a previous video I showed you about that. Um, but I installed it using the Zen installer, which is the Zen in, uh, installer platform or framework it's called, ZIF. Uh, and it's um, a replacement for the Arch installer framework, which existed as early as July of 2002. And um, so for the purists out there who think that Arch uh, should be installed using uh, source code only, compiled, and uh, and then uh, scripts run in order to install it and that's the only way to do it, it's the Arch way. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not and you you wind up with Arch just like you would when you compile it. Uh, and so uh, that's rubbish. Um, just wanted to say that uh, this is a very nice, crisp uh, operating system, very stable, um, very responsive, uh, very uh, memory non-intensive um, out of the box when you install it it runs about 300 megabytes out of 8 gigs on this system here for RAM which is not bad at all uh, when nothing else is running. Now right now I'm running a simple screen recorder because um, I'm recording this video and so it's going to be using more memory uh, but uh, still uses a small amount of memory uh, so it's a very lightweight. This is based on the XFCE desktop environment, which is a lightweight desktop environment. What I've done is I've solarized it here and uh, put a uh, solarized dark theme on it and also used the solarized Arch Linux wallpaper. So it looks really nice. No icons out on the desktop up here. This is a panel that I've got set up here that used to be down here. It used to look totally different and I've turned it vertically and put it against the the left panel here, left side. So it's really nice and they got the panel at the top here too. So let's get into SyncThing and show you how that works. Um, you go over to the SyncThing website and let me just go ahead and read uh, the opening here which is the mission basically of SyncThing. It says SyncThing replaces proprietary sync and cloud services with something open, trustworthy and decentralized your data is your data alone and you deserve to choose where it is stored if it is shared with some third party and how it's transmitted over the internet that's a very good policy and that's why I like this application because uh, it's under my control um, I can determine who I share with and who I don't share with uh, it uses encryption so the, uh, the connections with the, all the devices is secure and private as noted down here it is private it is encrypted and it requires authentication in order to uh, make the connection to sync up the devices I believe with sync thing you can sync up to five devices simultaneously don't hold me to that um, we'd have to get into the documentation fully but I think I read something that said that you can only sync up to five which is pretty good across uh, um, open source, you know, cross-platform, across your network, uh, and the fact that it's free makes it even better. So there's a Windows installer for SyncThing. It uh, also runs in Mac OS. It's totally cross-platform. Uh, uses the SyncThing GTK, 
There's an Android app for it available from Google Play. Some of the uh, distros, or some of the platforms rather, that uh, SyncThing can run on, the core, are uh, Linux 32-bit, 64-bit, ARM, and Arch 64. Um, MIPS, uh, Windows 32, 64-bit platform, FreeBSD 32 and 64 and ARM. Uh, Solaris 64 bit, because Solaris only comes in 64 bit. <clears throat> Dragonfly BSD, so the Berkeley uh, software development. Uh, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and then pure source code. Alright, so SyncThing comes in a lot of different varieties. It is openly developed here, as, you, as indicated on the website. Uses an open protocol, uh, SyncThing protocol definition and uh, it's easy to use and that's the best part of it you can donate also to sync thing on their website here I uh, highly recommend you do that to help support the development of this very nice application that I'm going to show you uh, how to use alright so now that we've done that uh, what I did was uh, in my case since I'm running Arch Linux uh, I've already got it installed on the Windows 10 platform in my living room uh, on the network and so I had installed uh, here the 64-bit version of SyncThing for Arch and I just clicked on the 64-bit here and that brought up this screen uh, and it asked me do I want to save the file and that is the SyncThing Linux AMD v1.0.0.tar.gz so it's a, a gzipped tarball. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it because I've already downloaded it and installed it. Uh, but if I go out to cancel it because I've already downloaded it and installed it uh, but if I go out to um, File Manager, let's bring that up and get into uh, the home directory, Home Data Pioneer here. Um, sync thing, uh, Linux AMD v1.0.0.tar.gzip rather is here. So here's the gzipped tar ball. I uh, unarchived this particular tar ball. Here's the gzipped tar ball. Unarchived this particular tarball, gzipped, and decompressed it using the Arc uh, application here on Arch Linux, and it produced this uh, Arch Linux laptop or Arch or Sync thing rather Linux AMD 64 v 1.0.0 folder. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, file manager out and get back to the desktop. Let me open up the uh, terminal. This is the terminal emulator. And let me go to full screen here so we can see this better. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm going to change directory to sync thing to that folder. There it is. I'm going to hit enter and uh, bring up that folder. And let's look at the contents of that folder. And you can see that there is a file inside uh, this folder called sync thing and it does have the executable bit turned on for uh, the user for the uh, uh, group that the user belongs to and for other and so in order to run sync thing all you need to do is launch the executable and so to do that in Linux I'm going to do a dot forward slash and sync thing and hit enter and it's going to run the terminal execute the program and it's going to launch the browser and take us to 127.0.0.1 port 8384 and here we are so this is sync thing running on port 8384 um, and this indicates the host name of the device that it's installed on which is the host name I gave Arch Linux when I installed it using this installer and that is Arch Linux 2018 laptop all right. I've connected SyncThing here on this laptop to a remote device which I designated as Win10 Desktop. Okay, And I currently have a folder, uh, you can't see that because I'm not at my Win10 Pro machine, but I've got a folder out there which is the Documents folder, or rather the Pictures folder of uh, on the Windows 10 platform under my user ID there. Um, which I'm sharing currently here and I'll show you that in a moment but it says it's up to date so it's synced up I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, so here's the folder right here Win10 user pictures folder I'm gonna go ahead and share a folder here on this platform with the Windows 10 platform 
and show you how to do that. So the way to do that is very easy. You just hit the Add Folder, brings up this screen, and you've got a folder ID, and this is the encryption part of this application. This is an, a, uh, a folder identification that is encrypted. The platform, or the folder rather, that I want to share is, I'm going to go ahead and remove this designation, which is okay to do. And I'm going to share the, uh, I'll just go ahead and share the pictures folder or directory here on Arch Linux, which is Home Data Pioneer Pictures. I'm going to share that with the Windows 10 Pro platform. And I want to give the folder a label, which is a human recognizable label. And I'm going to call that the Arch Linux Desktop or Laptop. pictures directory. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share this as um, with the Win 10 desktop. So I'm going to click put a tick in the in there. And uh, before I click save, I'm going to click on file versioning tab and I'm going to tell it that the file versioning that I want is simple file versioning. Okay. And I'm going to tell it to keep two copies of every file that's either modified or, dele or deleted, moved or deleted rather. Um, and so if I accidentally delete a file uh, in the uh, pictures directory here uh, on the Arch system that gets replicated and synchronized over the Windows 10 platform, uh, there are two copies that are kept in a hidden folder location that I can retrieve through a restoration process. So this is a very nice application. Uh, I use it as a backup, but you can also use it to synchronize. It's like a mirror. I'm going to go ahead and click Save here. All right, and right now it says unknown, but it's scanning, and so it says it's up to date. So it just it took my pictures directory here um, on the Arch Linux platform, and it sent it over to the Windows 10 platform, uh, and it put it in a location there on the Windows 10 platform. Um, and it's called Arch Linux Laptop Pictures Directory and I can go ahead and pin that to the uh, uh, pin that in you know to the uh, quick area here in Windows 10 and uh, and that way I can find it very easily when I get on the Windows 10 platform alright so it's syncing that platform now so it hasn't completed that process it's still at 82 percent um, but I've already synced up, as I said, the Windows 10 user uh, users pictures folder, and so uh, let me go out on uh, Windows. I mean the Arch t platform again. Let's get into the uh, area here in the um, file manager, and here's the Windows 10 users pictures folder. All right, that you can see. Uh, all that's over there and so let me go ahead and open that folder in the normal way here in the file manager and so that's everything that was on the Windows 10 Pro platform that's related to pictures uh, that's now been synced to my uh, home data pioneer and a directory called Windows 10 user pictures folder on my Arch system so I can access these things and so if I wanted to look at some AUR helper screenshots all I have to do is double click on that and um, I want to take a look at the Pacman uh, xg.ping file I can just right click on it and open it uh, with the Ristretto image viewer and there we go alright and that's on my Windows 10 platform but it's synced up here on my Arch uh, Linux platform as well. Alright, so that's how it works. Um, SyncThing is uh, an application that syncs uh, on a schedule. Uh, it syncs, I believe, every um, 60 minutes uh, here on this uh, platform as well uh, and on the other platform in Windows 10 also. Um, you can go into the settings here and you can see that you've got a device name here, minimum disk free space, here's the API key 
that is the encrypted part of this process. So all the data between that gets synced between the two devices here are encrypted or is encrypted using this API key. Uh, and then um, I don't have, uh, I've got stable releases only being automatically upgraded here in the app. Okay, so that's a uh, sync thing. Uh, it's very nice, very easy to use, um, and very easy to set up as you can see. Uh, you replicate this process on the other end uh, to sync things from the Windows 10 Pro system to the Arch Linux system. Okay. Um, let me uh, show you one other thing before we get out of here. What I did was, um, in order to keep prevent from having to launch uh, this application the way I did, the way I showed you, by uh, going into the home directory in Arch and then finding the executable and then running it, um, let me go ahead and um, stop the uh, sync thing first before I do this. One second, let me find it and let me go ahead and close this. And then in the terminal, let me do a, a control C to close. Okay, so I've got sync thing closed now on this end. What I did was uh, there was a file in Arch Linux, uh, and it's under the uh, root directory. I'm not sorry, I'm not in the root directory, but under the uh, home directory uh, for the user, which in this case is uh, Data Pioneer, Home Data Pioneer, um, and it's called dot bash rc and so let me open up the terminal and let me bring this up to full screen again and uh, I've got nano installed on here so I'm going to do a nano do a sudo nano and then uh, I'm already in my home directory so all I need to do is dot bot dot bash rc open that up and I need the password first get in. Alright, and so I'm now looking at my .bash RC file. What I did was I created an alias here and I stored it in .bash RC which makes it a persistent alias and I called it sync so the alias's name is sync and what it is is home data pioneer sync thing Linux AMD 64 v 1.0.0 and then the dot forward slash sync thing, same thing I did manually uh, in the terminal earlier, and I saved it. So I put the quotation marks on either side, that's very important, you need to do that to create the alias, and then I saved it by doing a control X and then C, but I've already saved it. And so if you're saving that for the first time, you do a control X um, and then do a Y for yes and to save the file. But you have to have sudo privileges to do this, uh, so you need to do sudo first to make sure that it's a read-write nano process. Otherwise, it's going to tell you that it can't save it. All right, and so now all I need to do to launch sync thing, let me clear the screen, is to just run the alias, sync. And so it's going to run the alias, and it's going to launch sync thing once again, just like it did earlier. And there you go. Um, set up so that it's very easy like running any program like in Windows and so in a few seconds we should have sync thing come up and um, there we go alright so that's how you do it that's what sync thing does very nice application um, if you have any questions just leave in comments down below and I'll put a link out to the sync thing uh, website so that you can go there or download this for yourself and uh, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.